Sure, Uncle. Yes, please pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this evening time that you've given to us. Lord, even as we have gathered today, Lord, to listen to your word, once again, we want to thank you for an opportunity like this, Lord, where all of us can stay at our home and come here together, Lord, to listen to your word. Lord, we, we are hungered to listen to you. We want to know more about you, Lord. Give us grace, so Lord, so that we understand your word more deeper in our lives. And Lord, that we will use these words in, in our lives, in our daily living, Lord. We pray that these words will be deep-rooted in our lives, Lord, that we will bear fruits of 30, 60, or 100 folds in our lives, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, Lord, and we surrender ourselves unto you, Lord. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying. Thank you for praying. And uh, of course, we did uh, uh, finish the subject called uh, a series of studies called The Blessings of the Upper Room. And we, we did uh, from five chapters. We did not do all the five chapters verse by verse or anything like that. But we did have a bird's eye view, a bird's eye view of the whole uh, five chapters. As a bird would fly, it would just have its, its like, you know, to pick up all the highlights, as we call it. So we did do some highlights, and those highlights were really helpful to me and to all of us. And I have received some messages and chats saying that it was a blessing. It is all by the grace of God, all glory to Jesus, always. So this uh, evening, the Lord has given me a subject called, okay, are you ready for this? A subject called friend, okay, friend. All right, whenever the word friend comes, whenever I use that word friend, immediately your brain, you know, is stimulated by something. Okay, now let me ask you, you know, who are your friends? Who are your friends? Okay. Listen to the statements that I will make. Okay. Who are your friends? First question. As you're thinking, I'll release the second one. Okay. I'm not asking you to name your friends or whatever it is, but in your mind, if you have a flashback of your friends and friendships, okay, that have gone by. And also the next question, you know, for the first question, you might be thinking, okay, uh, the pastor, pastor is asking a very vague question. Who are, who are your friends? There are many friends. Right from childhood till now, there are many friends. Maybe hundreds. Maybe in the, in the 500s, maybe I don't know how many friends you have. Uh, that people who have just high, said hi and bye are friends also sometimes. And then they somehow text a message and saying, you know, hi. I met you the other day. I used to study in your class in 6th standard or 8th standard. That would really bring life to that friendship again. <laughs> that has happened to me once. Okay. Now, um, then uh, my next question is, who are your close friends? Well, that makes, now, you are, now we are getting somewhere. Okay. Who are your close friends? Then uh, the, 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 the way you explain close friends is you have a click. Okay. You have a click. That means you, know, you have a small group. Or oh, everyone, you will not talk to everyone about everything, okay? Neither did I when I had my schooling and college days. No, we don't talk everything to everyone. But to close friends, we have friends, but you know, we rejoice. We just, we can go to a restaurant. We used to have, we didn't have big restaurants while I was in college, but at least, you know, we used to go for a cup of tea and maybe for some idlis or vadas or whatever it is, some snack. No, a group used to go, but in that itself, there used to be what, called, what is called as close friends, maybe four, five, seven, ten, something like that, okay? Those are called as close friends. And uh, let me explain to you how this works, how this works, okay? Uh, that will ring the bell for you also. You may have done this before. I have done this before in my college days, in my school days. Supposing, you know, supposing someone is approaching Someone is approaching who's not in the close friends group, okay? Someone is approaching your group right now. And then, you know, then uh, nobody has noticed, but you're speaking loudly about that person, okay? Who's, who's approaching? And then suddenly you say, oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. This side, man, this side. This side. Okay, all right, change the topic. <laughs> because, because, you know, you are in a click. You're, you're in such. That means you hold secrets. You hold secrets, okay? Friend and friendship 
is a gift from God. Okay. Of course, not to gossip or not to talk ill about others, but still friends and friendship goes a long way in life. Okay. It goes a long way in life. But I uh, asked you about two questions. Who are your friends? Maybe 20, 40, 80, 100, 200. Who are your close friends? It boils down to uh, um, those you can number maybe 5, 10 max, like you know, 15, 20. If you are very friendly, maybe let's say 30, 30 close friends. But who is your best friend? Okay. Maybe one, max two, max two, like that. Very, very close. Very, very close. Even in that close friend group, you will still talk to your friend in a different way. That's a close friend. Okay, that's a close friend. Whom you can trust. Okay? Who's got such fantastic chemistry with you. Such fantastic chemistry with you. You just, if you look with your eye, he can understand. Okay? Just one look. Something, some expression. Immediately. Because that's the closeness of a close friend that you understand. Not only trust, now you understand each other. Okay? Now I'm not talking of boyfriends or girlfriends. Even that would be a case. But still what I'm saying here is, even generally when you're talking, even I, 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 was, I was given to understand that the group that we are discussing today uh, it would be a few few young people are there, but also there are a lot of lot of uh, grown ups are there in their twenties and a lot of thirties. Uh, uh, I don't say the twenties are grown ups, but still young people. But still, you know, above thirty, above forty people also are there, and so it looks like you know the the bandwidth is different, the spectrum is a little little broad. So when you talk about friendship, you might you know that rings a bell for you. It goes back years. But also, right now, um, I would like to, let us not spend more time on the introduction itself, but this is enough. Friend and friendship is important to you and me. All right? And even in the Bible, the Bible speaks of friendships. Okay? The Bible speaks of several friends. Okay? Now, if I talk to you, uh, talk about uh, uh, friend, okay? Okay? Uh, well, what what comes to your mind if I ask you about two friends in the Bible? Okay, you are right. David and Jonathan. Their hearts, the Bible says, their hearts were knit together. Wow, because of an incident that happened. Because of an incident that happened, we will we'll not be discussing this friendship this evening. But we'll be going back to another friend, which is called, who's called as a friend of God. We'll come, we'll come to that person. Okay. So the greatest, the greatest blessing is, the greatest blessing is that we have today is God, the Creator, has willingly decided, has willingly consented. To strike friendship with his own creation, that's with you and me. Oh, that's, that's a very big thing. That's a very big thing to start with. Let me tell you, dear people. Can you imagine top people? Okay, top people in the world. Okay, top people in the world. Real, real rich. The, what we call as filthy rich. Okay, very rich people. Sometimes they would... Maybe they will strike a friendship. Maybe they will, for a business deal, they would like to have a friendship. But definitely not a heart-to-heart -heart friendship who are not of the same level. Okay? They cannot stoop down. They cannot come down and make friendship. Okay? With people all, uh, with people on the road. People of a much, much lower, I shouldn't say that, but that's true. People of lower income, or maybe different, uh, culturally different, socially different strata of people. So what happens is when when we talk about friendship in the Bible, especially God consenting to become a friend of a human being, this is the highest humility of God. So the highest 
the human hum, the highest quality of this friend from heaven is his humility to strike friendship with you and me he says i have agreed to become friends with reverend hayman peter pastor hayman peter i have agreed to become friends with all of you in the group wow isn't that a blessing isn't that a isn't there something to be choice of course spiritually speaking yes our best friend is the lord jesus christ okay he should be he will be your best friend all right i'm coming to uh, the book of james the book of james uh, chapter 2 we find a, a very nice verse there the book of james chapter 2 I'm reading verse twenty-three, and the scripture was fulfilled, which said, "Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God." This is good. This is excellent. in fact in fact god decided yahweh decided that he will come down and make friends with a man called abraham was he perfect no i don't think so he had his own flaws he had his own defects so god does not make friends with perfect people he will make friends with imperfect people and make them perfect in time okay that means he begins he begins to influence his character he, he, he god himself would impute his righteousness because that is that is his character so there are two things here abraham believes god and god imputes his righteousness upon a believing abraham so i think our prerequisite is first to believe god and then have his righteousness imputed to us to strike friendship with god that is the first step that is the first step that is the reason why we always they be evangelical always you know like people who are wanting to preach the gospel wanting to share the good news of jesus that is the basic step that is the first step if you believe repent believe receive the gift of eternal life through christ then you become friends with god as soon as the lord jesus gives his righteousness a robe of righteousness to the poor wayfaring stranger like you and me to the prodigal who comes back to his father's house lo and behold he gets the robe of righteousness so to say bring the best robe bring the best robe okay Let's put it on him so believing is our part imputing his righteousness on us is his part and uh, dear people of god that would be a great great thing for all of us all of us to strike friendship with the living god amen hallelujah praise god for that all right uh, uh, <clears throat> let us look at another verse in proverbs pro the book of proverbs chapter 18 proverbs chapter 18 i want to read one verse there Proverbs 18, and I want to read verse 24. Verse 24. Okay. Okay. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. That's a good character. A man that has friends. 
or at least a man who wants to be friend uh, want to have friends he himself must show himself friendly he has to show himself friendly rather he has to show himself to be a friendly person only then there will be friendship okay so this is another level right? another emotional level that we are talking of but don't stay there come to the reality of god who wants to become your friend this evening come to the reality of this we call you know sometimes we call, we have, i have said this we all have said we have experienced this my friend gave me heart right he deserted me or she deserted me why because we are human but god from his side never ever deserts you and me once he strikes friendship once through the blood of jesus christ you are friends of god god is our friend god is your friend he will never leave you nor forsake you absolutely he will never do that take him at his word he said never leave you nor forsake you who said this our heavenly friend has said this our lord jesus christ has said this you can never say you can never i can never say that jesus gave me heart no i will take back my words even now because it's a serious issue to blame god that way all right let's look at uh, let's look at this uh, man called abraham man called abraham we'll come back to the book of genesis and then you know we will not see the entire story of this man called abraham it might take close to about uh, i think uh, 50 to 60 hours to see the life of abraham okay the life of abraham <clears throat> now we'll do one thing we'll do one thing we will check we will check on the qualities of becoming a friend the quality of a person who wants to be a friend of god okay if you and i come close to these qualities be sure that god will continue that friendship yes in spite of our problems he will be there but one thing is good to be a happy friendship not friendship only just for the sake of just call them for okay we today we have a birthday come no today we have this today have that then afterwards you don't even see them for about one year two years like that. that's not that's not real friendship but 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 god in the in the, you know when he came to strike friendship with abraham what he did what did abraham do he believed god and god himself imputed his righteousness upon abraham so the friendship was struck the friendship was retained okay let's look at uh, some of the characters of becoming a friend of god or continuing or maintaining that friendship with god maintaining the friendship with god you have to maintain it okay you have to maintain it all right um, i'm i've gone to genesis chapter 12 okay and i'm going to read verse 1 now the god had now the lord had said unto abraham abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you and i will make you make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and i will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee curse of thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed what is the next what is the next verse say so abram departed as the lord had spoken unto him not only believing your friend you have to be obedient to your friend being obedient uh, for the sake of 
when I use this word for the sake of, okay? At your workplace, your boss says, you know, timings have changed a little bit, so you have to report by, let's say, graveyard shift, as they call it, you know, in the middle of the night. So I don't know what time it starts, it might start at about seven in the evening or five in the evening, whatever it is, goes right up to three or four in the night, and then you go back home. So but it, what, whatever time your boss says, okay, now everything's locked down, but you have to log in, you have to log in at a certain time, okay? Work from home is you log in at a certain time and you are face-to-face you -face -face with your boss, you are face-to-face -face with your clients or whatever it is. So <clears throat> obedience for the sake of, okay, I'm going to use that word for the sake of, that phrase I'm going to use. So when the, when, when, when the boss says, you have to be, you have to report in or uh, for the biometric, you have to report in by three o'clock in the afternoon. You will report, you will report at 2.55 or 2.50. Okay, I'm very excited for all of you, you know, you have much before I come and sit here, you're already logged in. Okay, you're already logged in. Okay, that's wonderful. Hats off to you. You are just become, you are just gained that character of Abraham. Okay, mm -hmm. obedience at this certain time. So Jason says, you know, nothing much to, uh, no, uh, no. when I say, you know, do the announcements, he says nothing much, but tomorrow we'll meet at four o'clock. And good, the meeting is, also, you know, it's open at 10, 15 minutes earlier, and then you're locked in. So Abraham, Abraham, as soon as God called him, he did not pout. He did not pout. So what happens is, even in our life, for the sake of what I said, why do you obey your boss? I know why. <laughs> you know exactly why you behave. You know, you, you, you kind of, where you are very obedient to um, boss. You get your salary. You get your salary for the sake of obedience for the sake of. Sometimes you want to change your job because you don't like the team lead or some project or something like that. But you you stay for the sake of sometimes. You have to stay. So these things have nothing to do when you strike friendship with the living God. These things, no, not these things. There are much, much, much bigger and greater things which will be unfolded to you today by the will of God. So we will be obedient much more than at your workplace or at school or at college. It's amazing. So when Abram, when, sorry, sorry, when God went to Abram in the in the earth of the child is and called him out from his father's house and his former skin bread. Immediately, Abram left that place. So when Abram left that place and he marched on to Canaan, he came to Haran, that is north of Israel, and he kind of settled there for some time. And just after his father dies, again God appears to Abram. God did not appear to Abram once the first time in, in Mesopotamia and says, you know, Abram, just get out, of the, get out of this place and then come out of your father's house and then come. Okay, move. Move to the promised land. Okay, I'll go meet you there. No, no, no. He walked with him. He talked with him. He appeared to him. God appeared to Abraham several times. Many times he did reiterate his given promise. He talks to his friend. You don't talk to a friend only on phone for some, only for some reason, for some two, two years once. No, no, no. You talk to them now and then. As soon as you have a news, whether good, bad or whatever, you want to call your friend first. You want to call your parents first. Yeah, that's fine. We're talking of friend. Okay. Okay. Your parent may be a friend. In fact, from my, my children are like friends for me. My wife is like a friend to me. So what happens is, when we, whenever, whenever I have a good break news, you know, I'm like, oh, she's not picking up. Okay, she's not. 
I think she must have kept the telephone somewhere. So I find someone else who has the phone at home and says, you know, why Ma is not picking up? Why, why am I not picking up? Just tell her. Tell her to call me immediately. Then I expect a call. Oh, there it is. You know what happened? Because that's the friendship. You struck friendship. You're, you're with that person now. So you, when God talks to you, the immediate thing is first is believing. Yes, righteousness is imputed on you. His characters come upon you. And now you begin to obey his commands. All of his commands are written in the, in, in the Bible. I don't, say, I, I, I don't mean to say that you, are, you are all have to be 100% perfect. 100% perfect. 100% perfect, holy, and you know, almost unapproachable by anyone. So to say, perfect and holy, and only then God becomes your friend. No, no, no. God began friendship even when Abram was in Mesopotamia and while he himself was, a, was, was, was completely sold out into idolatry and other things. At that time, because God knows at the end product, because on the assembly line, there are several raw materials and several parts that are going here and there and with automation that goes on there because the end product is on the last table. Okay, so the so God has the sights on the last table where it comes out as a beautiful finished product. So when God knew that Abraham would become Abraham one day, and a great nation will be born, and our entire history will be changed because of this one man's decision to obey and believe God with his life. Have you done that? Can you take this friend for his word? Yeah, you can. I have. I have believed in him. I have believed in him. Okay? You have believed in him. You have, you have received the eternal life. And so now you are rejoicing. So what is the, what happened? What are the, what are the prerequisites of striking great good friendship? Being friendly. He must show himself friendly. He who wants to have a friend must he himself show to be friendly with that person. So, so God and Abram struck friendship. Then let us see. Then you know, he comes to he comes to what is that? Uh, the land of Canaan, and you know he builds several altars there and he worships God and. Um, then, you know, was Abraham perfect? No. We'll come to that little later on. We'll come to that little later on. But also, uh, God wanted to kind of test him. Listen to this word. God does not tempt us because James chapter 1, it's very clear, you know. Let not anyone say that when he is tempted, he is tempted by God. God will not tempt a person to do sin. But God does test people. What do you mean by QC in an assembly line in a factory when this pen has to come out? This will be tested for its plastic strength. For the screw thread here, everything, whether it sits properly. For the ballpoint, the length is correct, everything is fine. Then it passes through QC, quality control. So, for Abram to become Abraham, several QCs he has to pass. And so what happens is he begins to, he begins to, uh, what is that, uh, believe God, obey God. But you know, when, 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 uh, uh, over, the, over a period of time, over a period of time, he's almost come to a point of desperation. Who? Abraham. Okay. Still his name is not changed. In the 17th chapter, his name is changed by God. 
still in the 15th chapter, you know, he, he's still Abram. Abram means exalted father. Abraham means father of many nations. That is the time when he becomes Abraham and he gets one son and one son gets two children. And out of that one son called Jacob has 12 children, 12 boys and one girl, 13 children. And then from that on, from those 12 tribes, the nation of Israel came about. And on and on and on. Okay. The father of many nations, the father of multitudes, as we call. Okay. But still, he's still Abram. And God comes to his tent. Okay. In fact, uh, just before the lockdown happened, you know, three, four weeks back, uh, Jason came from, uh, from Boston. He wanted to surprise us. He wanted to surprise us because I've done this before. So I think he got some clue from that. So, <laughs> so he came and uh, he kind of surprised us. As soon as I opened the door, I didn't expect Jason to stand at six in the morning. He said somebody has come for, uh, you know, for some hard, hard drive or something like that. I think it, he said it was Laku. He has come for some hard drive. So open the door, Jessica opened the door, Jessica called me and then I opened the door. Lo and behold, Jason is standing in front. You know what I did? I didn't even know what I was thinking. As soon as I opened the door, I wanted to close the door. I went, you know, yeah, he has made a video of it. That excitement, you would not even know what to do. So when, when a friend visits another friend, it's a total new, total different thing. So God, who's Abraham's friend, has come to Abraham's tent. A friend visits another friend. That's good. Okay. And he comes and says, you know, Abraham, in the middle of the night, and, uh, and, uh, he recognizes, he did not say, he did not say, who are you? Show me your ID. No, he didn't say that. He says, he begins a conversation with God. Because he knows the voice of his friend. The more you listen to the voice of your friend, it becomes so familiar to you. It becomes so familiar to you. I don't know about you, but you know, in, when I was in PUC in Darwa, studying my PUC there, and so uh, why I went to Darwa is because you know I was not doing too good here, and so they kind of reprimanded me and uh, they sent me to Darwa to go and study there. I was busy with sports here, okay, so they sent me to Darwa to study. So I was studying there for two years. What happened with this? And we used to have that, as I said, you know, the second group, who are your close friends, okay? Close friends. I think we were about three or four friends. We were very close, very close. And uh, evening, Darwar is a very small town. Okay? Darwar is one, one, one street like that, in the main city. In, uh, now, it is, now it is expanded. But then it was very small. So supposing we saw one of our four, we used to, we used to give a signal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I get the whistle out, but it, this is how we used to whistle. Immediately, one or two times you whistle that way. Immediately that friend will look where are my close friends? Somebody's whistling the same tune. <laughs> because the familiarity of the voice of our friend called Jesus makes us to respond to him. Okay? The familiarity of what God has said makes us, makes that friendship with God more closer and closer and closer. Till such time. Till such time. 
that he will begin to reveal his secrets to us that we will see in a while. That he will begin to reveal his secrets to us. He begins to make covenants with us. Covenants with individuals and with families. Oh, that would be wonderful. He will bless us. This friend is no ordinary friend. This friend is not the multi-billionaire. He is the king of the universe and the owner of it all. And he's our, yours and my redeemer. He's, the, he's called as Goel. Goel means kinsman redeemer. The one who has bought us. The one who carries us. The one who says, you know, come, come, sleep, sleep, sleep. Relax. I'm here with you. I am here for you. So when, when he said, when he said, Abraham, can you for sure this was the voice of the Almighty God. This was the voice of God Himself. Then you know He begins a conversation, and of course He begins to fight with Him. You know, very lovingly He starts fighting with Him. And you know, first day, second day, when you make friendship, you don't fight with them lovingly. No, no, no. You don't have the right to fight. Okay. But when the when the when you become closer and closer and closer and closer. You can just say, you know, what have you done? What have you given me? No, this is what. No. Okay, you let your heart out. You spread your feelings to your friend. Very nicely. And you have a right to fight them. Lovingly. Lovingly. Even Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. Angel of the Lord. That was Christ himself. Because he changed his name. He changed. Because, and uh, you know, he... And you know, he could not overcome, of course. But of course, what happened was he was lovingly fighting with God. He had this friendship with God. So Abram, Abram began hearing the voice of God and started obeying, started believing in him. In fact, the very first verse that I showed you in the book of James chapter 2 and verse 23, it, it is said, and, and when Abraham believed, God imputed his righteousness upon him and it was counted to him for his righteousness. And then what happened was, and then if that is been written, that friendship started there. Because you see there, it's, it's been written there. Okay, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord because he promised, promised son for him in that night, in that darkness of that night, in his old tent, Abraham received this covenant from his friend. And then he says, and it said, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. The same verse is in James chapter 2 and verse 23, which we just read. Okay, so what, so what, oh, what God did with Abraham is he began to seal the friendship by often coming to him, often coming and speaking the words of eternal life, the words, the word of God. The plan that was, you know, he was kind of showing him on a, on, though not on an everyday basis, but I think from time to time when he came, he says, you know, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to do like this. I will bless you like this. And, you know, first time he says, you know, like the sand of the sea, I will bless your generations. Okay, your children, uh, your, um, what is that? Your seed will be blessed like that. Your future will be fantastic. Once he shows the sand of the sea, second time he says another notch up. Okay, another notch up because the friendship is growing and growing and growing and above. And so he shows the stars the next time when he makes a promise to this friend. Get excited, dear friend, dear, dear God, man of God, woman of God, boy or girl of God. Get excited, yeah, because God has decided to become our best friend. Does it mean, okay, now let me share this now itself. Some young people must be thinking, you know, does it mean that when God is our best friend, we lose other best friends in the world? No, I didn't say that. I did not say that. Man has, made, so man has been made to be social like this. Man has been made to be social like this. Man has been made to live in families and communities. Man, that's why, as a, when, when God, in fact, confounded the languages, confounded the languages, we become clickish about languages also. Okay, <laughs> when I was working in the world in 1985, 86, I think, 85, 
I went to I went to Delhi where you know, our head office was, and then you know I was going around in Connaught Place. Connaught Place is in Delhi, a central place like a, it's called as a Connaught Circus, like that. You know, it's round. Like, and then what happened was when I was going and walking, uh, everyone's speaking Hindi and. Uh, Mera Hindi to atna acha nahi hai. Just now I am speaking a little better. That time it was not good at all because you know, not usage, no usage here. And so I was speaking in Hindi a little bit here and then speaking in English. Everyone speaking in their own language is fine. Suddenly, what happened was <laughs> a man said to his wife. A man said to his wife, "I kare baare hai." Well. Somebody speaking my language, okay? So I became clickish. So I went to them. We had coffee. Uh, we had tea, very good tea there, and then we 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 went off. So what happens is God has created us to have friends. God has created us to be social. God has created to be you know to have languages, and then you know you click there and you feel that comfort zone. Sometimes you know maybe you have you have felt that way. Okay? You have felt that way, and you know somebody marries. Uh, someone from another language, so to say, another language, so to say. And uh, uh, let's uh, let's let me take a uh, an example like this. You know, the, a boy is uh, one language and the girl is another language. But the girl, when she goes back to her mother's house, she'll have a good freedom to talk in her own language. Blah 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 blah. And then the husband would be wondering in what she's talking. So what happens is, in every way, God has made us in such. Uh, for all of us, God has made us in such a way to have friendship, to have families, to have communities, to have languages, to have cultures. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Okay? So, so God began to give him promises. If we wanted to raise him from one level to the other, one level to the other. But what is the prerequisite? Believing. Believing. It's not only once in a lifetime, I believe in the Lord Jesus, I'm saved, now I'm fine. No, the just shall live by faith. Faith means belief. Okay? So by believing, by living by faith, not by sight, but by, you don't walk by sight, but by faith. So we continue to believe. Our faith will increase. It's a living, almost like a living organism. Faith, and the, that's what the disciples said, increase our faith. Let our faith grow. That's what happened to Abram. God was looking at the end product on the last table. The product he was saying there that he will become my man to, to, to become the head of many nations. And especially the nation of God, Israel. Through whom, through the tribe of Judah, Jesus was the Jew was born in a Jewish family, came the savior to the world. There are great plans, fantastic plans, but there must be a starting point. And Abram almost was like a starting point. Even though first Adam to last Adam, we see fine. So what happened is, in uh, Genesis 15, he heard the voice of God and he recognized and started having conversation with God. That's wonderful. Uh, in fact, uh, I do have a, a very peculiar kind of knocking the door. I have a ring on my finger here. So what I do is one, two, three, four. If I tap like this, immediately Asha knows that I'm knocking on the door. Because we are, because of the long times that we spend with each other. We know, we know each other now. Okay, much better than what we, we knew as soon as we were married. Okay, so what happens is you have to stay with that person. You have to stay with the person in order to know him. Okay, I think for the I think the first lesson, you know, I'm reminded of the first lesson that we had on, on the true vine and the branches here. Attached, then we receive from the true mind all the nutrients, all the characters that are needed. 
for our Christian living. So he is the true one. He is the friend. And now we are getting attached to that friend. All right. Uh, and then, um, of course, in different places, God began to talk to him, talk to Abraham, and he started giving him promises. But I'm, but I'm very, very much interested in chapter 18. You know why? Because chapter 17, God changed his name. Him and Sarah's name. It was before these two were called as Abram and Sarai. Now they have been changed to Abraham and Sarah. Okay? So what happened was, when the name was changed in 17, God comes again to his tent in chapter 18. And when he was sitting in the cool of the day there, at the tent door, okay, and uh, the verse 1, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door, in the heat, sorry, in the heat of the day, not in the cool of the day, because of the heat of the day. Then he sat there, okay? And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and he saw them. He ran to meet them from the tent door. I'm very sure, I'm very sure, because of the conversation that, that proceeds and then where it all ends in chapter 18. And I'll give you the last verse, verse 33. And he began the conversation of praying and talking to God about Sodom, about especially about Lot. Okay, his nephew who had gone to Sodom. So all the intercessory prayer and all that, not once did he ask, who are you? He knew. In fact, uh, in fact, Peter says, you know, you, you, you maybe you know unknowingly would have entertained angels. That was Lot, who unknowingly entertained angels. But here Abraham was very sure that these two angels were angels, and one person was Christ. One person is Christ. Okay. You must read homework. Homework. Good. You must read the entire chapter of the book of Genesis, chapter 18. If you read it entirely, you'll understand that one person in that tree was Christ. Okay? I, 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 it's not my uh, explanation. It's not my commentary on that. It is God's commentary on that. You'll realize. Okay? He, he speaks to him as Lord. He speaks to him as Lord. Right. And then... Um, um, so knowingly, the earthly friend ran to meet his heavenly friend. What does this show? This shows an eagerness to meet your friend. Are you very eager to meet Jesus? Quite often. Something to think about. I'll give you a test. Okay, I'll give you some, some small test now. The small test is your friend is meeting you in the word of God and then you know, you're seriously looking at First Kings and then you're looking at First Samuel and then you're going to Second Chronicles and then you know, you've gone to Ezekiel and then you know, you're making notes and other things. And that means your friend is speaking to you through this and then you're making good notes and everything's, everything's going on well and the phone rings. And another earthly friend overtakes your heavenly friend's voice. So the moment you kind of switch over, it's not good. I would suggest you put it off when you do your devotions. Please, I request you in the name of Jesus, do not meddle with this. Don't keep it near and pick the phone up, okay? Please put it off when the King of Kings is speaking. In a certain big conference, when you go and they will say, put off your cell phones. Put off your cell phones. Switch off. So, so many times you see, somebody's phone will start ringing in the middle, okay? But still, you know, you're obedient to these people who are in the conference. So you must be obedient to God when he speaks the best friend. 
a fantastic friend who will never leave you nor forsake you, who knows you completely, who helps you, who comes to you, makes covenant with you. He makes covenant with you. Your family makes covenant. He has made covenants with my family, your family. Are we perfect? No way. Was Abraham perfect? No way. But God, the perfecter, was involved with Abraham. So I encourage you, dear people, I encourage you, think of this friend. Okay. Uh, okay. When he came to Abraham's tent, Abraham's tent, now he's Abraham, Abraham's tent. And then, you know, uh, Abraham ran to meet them. And he bowed to the ground. Immediately he came to know. Immediately he came to know this is God, my friend. He will not bow down to someone who is passing by, who has come and sat near your gate or something. No. He had that inner voice of that friend speaking to him. Maybe. maybe, I'm not sure. When I reach heaven, I would like to ask Abraham, how did you come to know that this, you need to bow down to him and you know, show that due respect and everything else. It would have been a cultural thing, but still, I'm telling you, because the next one, of course, is would be cultural thing. You know, then you know, it says in you know, verse 3, my Lord, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, you won't say this to a passing passerby, you know, passerby, you won't say these things. These statements are very profound. Immediately, click. And uh, said, My Lord, if thou, uh, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, I fetch and I will wash your feet, and you rest for a while, rest yourself under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and give you comfort. And you know what he does? Abraham runs and shows hospitality. Whenever, you know how to tell your what is that? Friends, close friends, and best friends. Friends, close friends, best friends. Best friends. When friends just come, give them juice or tea, says, okay, bye, see you next time, call again, and then bye. Okay, then. When close friends come, then maybe do something else. Maybe dinner, um, maybe lunch, maybe lunch, maybe do lunch. Okay. But when best friends come, lunch, tea, dinner, dessert, they leave at 12.30 in the night. I want to talk with them, I want to stay with them, I want to show an extra love. Jesus has come to you and to your home. Give him that respect. Run, show your eagerness that you love your friend because he has loved you with an agape love, an unconditional love. Unconditionally, he has loved you and me. In spite of me, in spite of you, he has loved me and you. What a blessed friend we have. I'm still reminded of that song. I would have sung that, but I'm not a good singer. Okay, but still, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All right. Okay. And then what? And then, you know, he, the Bible says, and he keeps, he keeps running around. He, ran, he runs to meet them, talks to them. Uh, he says, no, let me give you water. Then the, they would have had the feet washed, everything. Then he says, now you go prepare something and come. Then he runs, runs, runs. That's the level of hospitality and love. These are attributes which are almost gone in the wind today. Gone with the wind today. Just finished. Yes, hospitality is reduced today. 
I could say. Of course, this lockdown is there. No, the, don't invite a lot of friends. I didn't say that, but I'm saying just this. Listen, when everything is fine, when everything is fine, your own people come, own, rela own relations come, someone who is in need who comes. The Bible says, if you have that much to give, don't tell them, I don't have it now. Please. I would never do that. Maybe once or twice I've done that before, much, much before. Even this afternoon, even this afternoon, there was a girl who came and asked for some rice and some oil. And then I went, our children said, you know, there's some girl who has come. And then, <clears throat> then they called me and then I went and asked her, where are you from? And then she's from that place that near the complex. I came inside. I ran inside and then because it's getting late to get into the Bible study here. Just before that, this happened. Then, you know, I came and then put some rice in a cover and then um, put some oil in the box and then I gave it to her. Let's go. Okay. Why I'm telling you this is, in fact, I shouldn't, shouldn't be saying what we do. Like, you know, but what I'm saying, when this word of hospitality comes, if we are able to do for a passerby, how much more I and you and I should do for our friend called Jesus? We all I stand at the door and knock. Of course, the context is different. We, it was an Odessian church age. It was almost like, almost like, he's knocking at the church door now. We have sent him out sometimes. So anyway, but if you, if you just use that word, if, if you use that verse, Chapter 3 and verse 20 of the book of Revelation, it says, You all are stand at the door and knock. <laughs> if any man opens the door, I will come inside and have fellowship, supper, or dinner with him. Fellowship, dinner with him. He comes and sits, wants to eat with us, wants to provide for that for us. It's amazing. What is the level of hospitality and love that you have shown your friend with you? Something to think about. These are practical issues I'm talking about today. And I'm, I'm, I was actually uh, told that I should not speak too fast like a conference or something like that. Speak a little slowly and clearly so that will help. Okay. So if some of you are worried that I'm speaking slow, uh, no, don't worry, I'm, I'm just fine. I'm just making that you are fine listening to the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> and God is using. And then uh, in chapter 18, then as soon as all the lunch, everything is, uh, sorry, everything is over, the best, the, the, the best thing that happens is for a friend is, the best friend, what he does is, he would want to give some gift and then go. That is the quality of a best friend. Once he, he, he comes to your home or you go to somebody's house, you can give them a small something and then leave. Okay? And so this heavenly best friend called Jesus who came to the door of Abraham, now that name is changed to Abraham, from Abraham to Abraham, the, the father of multitudes. Now the time is right. Now the time is right. Now the time is ripe and the time is ripe right now for Abraham and Sarah to receive that fantastic promise from heaven. Sand of the sea, stars in the heaven. Yeah, that's fine. But when is it happening? Now, chapter 18, the promise is coming. The promise is coming. After they had food, they did not just leave. Oh, okay, very good food. For the, the curry was very good. Yeah, it was a little spicy. We did talk about all the menu and all the food and nothing. Nothing is discussed here. This important thing has to be discussed. The important thing is the parting gift of the best friend is a covenant. A covenant that will stand for your future and your family future. 
a covenant. That means you know, that's the reason why you need to love this friend and love this friendship. It's amazing. And so he says, you know, I will, I will, I will give Sarah a son. She'll bear a son. Next time I come, she'll be having a child. And Sarah laughs. Abraham are all the way up. Sarah laughs. So many things are happening. She is completely out of the league of childbearing. Okay, she's very old now. She's out of the league. She doesn't have that facility, the medical facility, as you, as we call the cycle of life, as we call for the women. You know, she's past that. She's almost. I could say, you know, I could say, you know, she's as she's dry as a parched lamb. Like a stone, because that's why in Romans we see, you know, God could raise his children up from even the stones. Sarah was one stone. Nothing is impossible with God. And so he came and promised her. Sarah laughed. Abraham laughed. Whether people laugh or not, God does not change his program. That's a blessing. That's why he is the best friend. He will always keep his promises. He came. He came to their house. I ate. I had his I had the feet washed. He, they ate very well. Wonderful cooking, hospitality, love, obedience. Everything was good. But now, while parting, he says, he says, and um, this is the place when Sarah laughed, and you know they were thinking, you know, how is it possible? How is it possible? How is it possible? This is the place where that fantastic. Verse is written in verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is too hard for this friend from heaven. Even in your life right now. If you think you have problems, transfer those problems to the Lord Jesus Christ. Transfer them. He can take good care of you. He can take good and excellent care. You think your health is deteriorating? Transfer that completely to the Lord this evening. Your finances are having problems. Your family is in trouble. Your relationship is having problems. Whatever, wherever. It's getting served up. But take courage. The friend of Abraham is your friend and my friend this evening. And so he, he promised and then you know, uh, the Bible says like this, this is another one big thing we'll see and then we'll close. Okay, I think we're almost, almost come to the end of our time because it's already 5-5 five, five, I think. So let's, uh, let, let me tell you, you know what? He, he, uh, the, the, the Lord is proceeding to another city now. Lord is proceeding to another city. Yeah, the team is proceeding from Mamre, that is from um, what is that? Uh, Abraham's tent. They're moving. They're moving towards the Dead Sea, towards Sodom, towards Sodom, where Lot was. And the Bible says, the Bible says, you know what? The Lord said in Himself. The Lord thought in Himself. The Lord thought about this friend, Abraham. He thinks about you. He thinks about us. You know what he said within himself? He says, How can I hide from Abram, Abraham what I'm going to do in future? Wow. Don't you like such a friend who will tell you secrets? Hmm? To whom do you tell your secrets? Not to your parents, though. <laughs> when at that age, I'm saying, Not in that, not in that age. They will tell to your friends. Okay, something happens, they will call the friends, say, okay, because they know the secrets. So, Abraham as God's friend and God as Abraham's friend, they were sharing their secrets. He not only makes covenants, he shares us his secrets. He shares us his heart, more than the word secret. I would love to say that, you know, he shares his heart with us. It's a blessing. So this evening, how is your friendship with God? How 
is your friend? Hi, friend, how are you? Okay, bye. No, have a constant relationship with Jesus. Okay, don't run away from this friend. Run towards that friend. Have that eagerness. Show your love. Show your hospitality to him. Make him, give him that comfort level in your life. Yes, he needs it. He needs it. He wants it. Not that he needs it, but he wants it. He wants that place in your life. For things to happen, for, for covenants to come about, for great blessings to come about. And Abraham, of course, the next thing is he will start praying towards, you know, to the end, towards the end of the chapter, he begins to begins to pray based on the righteousness of God. He reminds his friend of the great the great righteous judge, you know, Greek judge, you know, uh, everyone, everyone with that, uh, like you know, all. Uh, the righteous people with the unrighteous. Okay? So he begins to pray. He begins to pray to this friend. And the friend answers very nicely. So let me tell you, dear people, this evening, I want you to talk to friend. Because your friend, this friend, Jesus, loves you very dearly. He loves you very dearly. Great friendship. And a great friend. May the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' name, Amen.